I'm Christina Mogg. I own Hoopla out of Boise. And I'm Megan Hamlin. And uh, I am, my husband and I own Southern Branding in Little Rock, Arkansas. So how did you, how long have you been doing this? How'd you get into the industry? What's your story? Okay. So I do kind of have a funny story about how I got into the industry. So my background was always restaurant, hotel management, has to really customer service, retail oriented positions. And when Chad and I got married, he was in this world and we had a, we had a child and I started taking on kind of the back end, you know, part of it and just really grew into where we are now, which is much more client facing in my role, really handling um, a lot of the day-to-day business sides of it. Um, but Chad actually started this company originally um, gosh, we're 13 years in now. And so 13 years ago, we got married in November. In October, we were having a counseling session with the, with our church. We got married in a church and, you know, Chad and I come in and our preacher's like, how's it going? What's happening for you this week? And Chad just says, well, I quit my job and I'm starting a company. And that's how I found out, had no idea. And that was the birth of Southern Branding. So and so, you know, what do you love about the industry? Well, for me, I love the creative side. Like that's always been something that has really spoken to me. I'm a huge um, art lover um, here in Arkansas. We have a great local artist scene um, and it really speaks to me. I like the chance of getting creative and learning and being able to use, you know, different techniques in different ways. Um, always trying to do something new and different really, really love that. And then I also love the customer service side of it. You know, that had always been what, um, you know, the hospitality industry, that's, that's what I had always done. And so really that translates totally into what, what we're doing now. It's all the same thing. You know, anything that you're doing that sells related is, is about customer service and how you're yeah. interacting. With people. For sure. And for sure. Um, So I have only been in the industry for a little less than three years. I spent a decade in corporate America and I um, was, you know, tasked to procure swag. And I didn't even know that this was like a career choice. I was using like a lot of people um, for imprint, Mm -hmm. Google, And then crossing my fingers and I'm, you know, when it would say you need a vector file, I'm like, what is a vector file? And then I'd like try to give a JPEG. And so it's just funny because I can vividly remember um, being more on the client side of things. Um, And then um, a little less than three years ago, I had the opportunity to kind of learn about um, what what it was to be a distributor, which is basically what me and you are called at this point. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I learned about it, I loved it because I am like you, um, before I was in corporate America, I worked at restaurants and I did, you know, more customer service. And then when I was in corporate America for the bulk of it, I was an executive assistant, which is very much solutions oriented, um, project management and, and customer service in a way. Because you're yeah. you're kind of catering to your C level executives and kind of being a gatekeeper and keeping them on task and all that good stuff. Yep. Um. So you know when I had the opportunity, my husband who's an entrepreneur as well, and I point this way because I'm in my office right now and he has an office next door to my office. Um. But he had convinced me to start my own company. Um. And so when I started. Hoopla a year and a half ago, my goal was instead of being a salesperson to be like a solutions partner, a brand consultant and an educator in a sense, because when I was buying this stuff, no one did that for me. No one did that for me. I wasn't getting really creative, you know, options. I didn't even know now that I know what's out there. I'm like, holy moly, like I have no more water bottles for me. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's how I got into it. And that's how I approach my business is as a solutions partner, a project manager, a brand consultant. And like you, I love the creative side of it, but I also love seeing like starting the project from beginning to end and, and kind of delivering that special product that I know people are going to use and mm-hmm. like be proud to have and give out and all that kind of jazz. So that's kind of what gets me going on it. 
I love seeing completed projects out in the wild, as we say, yeah. you know, promo in the wild, like out at a restaurant or wherever. And I see some right. the path that we've done. Like that's, that's super exciting. I feel like you and I are similar in some ways um, with our background and kind of our approach with it as well. Um, one thing, you know, I had somebody ask me the other day about what differentiates our business from another business. And, you know, typically the answer is, you know, people talk about, well, customer service, I'm going to give you blah, blah, blah. Well, customer service is really like, we aren't the ones that can judge what kind of service we are giving. That's really our, our client, right. right? And I would say one of the things that separates us from, from other businesses and, and yours as well is the knowledge that we have in really trying to um, offer those solutions like you're talking about and the different creative opportunities um, for our clients. And I think for me, that's why um, I wanted to, to kind of do this with you and to, to hook up with you with this, because it's important to me to, to educate our clients on what's out there, what kind of opportunities there are. Also, like what some of the struggles are within our industry yeah. you now, and so we can like, maintain expectations. Um, hundred percent agree with you. Um, I would say, uh, candidly, I a hundred percent agree with you, but candidly, part of my thing is I think, and I think a lot of people that follow me on social media, whether it be Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever, know that I'm very consistent with trying to bring like a high level of mm -hmm. like marketing for my own company. And, you know, the unfortunate thing, but fortunate thing about social media is it's constantly changing. So yeah. like, you never know what's going to help people slash get you more engagement. And so on my bucket list was to level up on my social media game. And part of that strategy, I thought I, it, IGTV, I don't know how to do it. Um, and so when you had approached me about kind of what should we do something together and we started brainstorming, I was like, oh, this is perfect. I can use this opportunity to like figure out IGTV, educate my clients or people that are just interested in the promotional products industry um, and just learn a new skill set. Cause I'm a, like a lifelong learner. I'm all about learning. And um, I hate social media in a way because it's a time suck and I'm a one woman business, but at the same time, I love seeing like results or getting engagement and like learning about it. So I do, it's a love hate thing for me, but like that is part of the reason that I agreed to, what is it like throw spaghetti on the wall and see if it sticks yeah. with this thing. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. I mean, yeah, your we'll social see. media is on point though. Like, oh, thank you. yeah, it, 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 I'm, I'm slowly climbing the ladder. Like we're trying to figure it out. Yours, you're, you got the A gang going. Oh, thank you. That made my day. Um, that really did. Uh, so I wanted to talk about what you just said just a minute ago. And you were mm -hmm. saying also keeping, keeping like people um, educated on like what we're facing, what issues we're facing in the promotional products industry. And we have a huge one that I know is a major pain point, And I cannot explain it enough to my clients where they understand it. And it is shipping inventory challenges it's crazy and, yeah that. stock stock yeah. right now is like my head's gonna explode because half the products i go to order before i now my new procedure before you know you could usually place an order without checking stock and know that it was probably going to be in stock and it was right. rare now my new process which is takes a lot of time is i have to check stock for each item i have to check production timelines and shipping like you said yeah. Um, and I would say at least half my orders currently, um, when I go to check stock are out of stock and I have to find an alternative to, for my client. So do you want to, do you want to talk about, cause you recently wrote a blog article that we both posted on our, um, separate websites. And so you kind of really know what's going on. If you want to talk about what, you know, the background on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then, you know, even to expand on what you just said with the inventory challenges and trying to check on the front end, you know, the, the behind the scenes process with us is, you know, we, we create a purchase order. Our client has said, yes, we're, we're going and we're like, great, we're going, we're, we have to still submit a purchase order, just like a lot of our clients mm -hmm. submit purchase orders to us. Right. So just in the time that that order is entered on the supplier end, somebody else could have stolen that stock too. Definitely. So it's, it's, it's a constant challenge mm -hmm. with that and it's changing on a daily basis right mm -hmm. now. 
Um, you know, I think I think a lot of people are familiar through the pandemic of seeing empty shelves, you know, in grocery stores, and it's still that way um, with a lot of items in in, in some areas. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people are also experiencing, you know, if you if you're doing any type of home remodeling right now, yeah. the price of lumber is up 130. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is not something that is challenging just for our industry. Um, we just never experienced challenges like this in our industry. So the thing is, it's just crazy. Um, We've seen photos of the LA ports where, you know, there are boats that are just backed up. They're just stuck there, Mm -hmm. just sitting there waiting. And there's a a container, a shipping container challenge. So everything is, you know, shipped in pallets, right? And then those pallets are loaded onto containers and that's how it gets here on a boat or on air freight. Well, right now there's a shortage with these containers. Um, so there's nothing to put them in to get them here. And that's a huge challenge. Um, mm-hmm. And because all of these shipping routes are backed up and backlogged, I mean, we all saw, you know, that the huge cargo ship in the yeah. US now and what kind of chaos that created. Mm-hmm. And even, you know, closer to home here in Arkansas, we recently, um, our I-40 bridge that connects us to Tennessee, a huge crack was found in it. And it's not really just like a crack, like the thing is broken and all the barges are backed up. Like they're uh-huh. just sitting there. So this is happening everywhere. Right. And because of this, it's creating a lot of challenges, getting supply in and then being able to deliver it on time. So kind of one of the things that, that we're talking to clients about is let's think about things months and months and months in ahead. Whereas yeah. before, you know, a client could have come to us and like, Hey, I've got this event and two right. weeks, what can I do? And you and I both would have been able to deliver. Mm-hmm. Now we can't do that. You know, there's, there's a few, we've got a few Trips. aces up our sleeves, yeah. right? But that's not, that's not the norm. So when yeah. we're thinking about event driven things, we need to be addressing those mm-hmm. things right now, yeah. especially events that are, we're planning for fourth quarter no one really knows what inventory is going to look like for fourth quarter. Um, Being suppliers bring things in with deep, deep, deep inventory. So ordering, Mm -hmm. you know, four or five, 10 times the amount that they may have ordered before, but that also ties up budget. So we're not getting as large of, uh, of a selection of items. We're getting deeper inventory so we can make sure that stock is available, but Mm -hmm. there may not be all of the items available that there once once was. So um, did you, were, did you watch any of the, the partners in promo? Were you? Were I you, did. Okay. I did watch it. I did watch it. Um, I passively watched it until I was called on and, and asked to ask questions, um, which I did do. Um, but I guess I would say like, I think my biggest pain points with this whole thing is um, really getting my clients to understand that This isn't a sales tactic. This is, I'm being dead serious. We need to plan ahead. And they kind of don't take me seriously because like you said, there, you have a couple of tricks up your sleeve. So I am usually able to execute and get them what they need, but it is, you, you can't be as creative. You don't have as much selection. You might have to pay for rush shipping because, you know, some of the suppliers, even though usually it's five to 10 business days plus shipping, Once art is approved for, for an order, some of the suppliers are so backed up that it's, um, taking, you know, three weeks versus two weeks to produce an item, um, and ship it. And, um, it's just, it's hard to understand that for the clients because that's never been something that we've experienced in the industry, or at least I haven't. And then the other thing that I think is also a double whammy, which is like a great problem to have is now that the CDC is saying masks, um, you know, you can not wear one if you're vaccinated, like things are opening back up. People are ready to party. People are ready to get out there and have some summer events and they're coming in fast and strong. So with the no stock, all of these people that hadn't been buying last year are now ready to buy and have fun and do their summer events. It's, it's, it's a catalyst for, for kind of a little bit of chaos. That's it. A little bit of chaos and we'll get through it, but I don't think things will normalize until 2022, especially like you were saying, I'm really interested to see how the holidays go. And I'm going to try to talk to my clients about ordering in August, like let's get in there in August. Cause it's already bad during the holidays. Yeah. That's already like stock is already bad usually. So I know this year is going to be bananas. 
Yeah. You know, one thing that I, I thought was interesting through some of the, the different education opportunities that we've had is, um, you know, not all supply, usually we get holiday catalogs, you know, we're bombarded by them and it's usually October, November, you know, from all of these different resources and right. that's, that's not going to happen this year. If there is a holiday catalog, you know, so someone's super duper with it and we're, we're, we're getting that curated right now, it's going to be August when it becomes available because yeah, we don't know what, what inventory is going to look like. Um, one thing that I've, I found interesting too is how this is really affecting our local supplier, and I'm saying local, like U.S. side supplier partners right. with, with customer service. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With, painful. It it's is, painful right now. It is painful right now. And, you know, I, I want to really educate our clients on what's going on with it too. So, because, you know, if we submit an order, we've got an enhanced date and the enhanced date is four weeks out. We've done our due diligence. We're planning ahead. We're going to get it done. That could change at any time, depending on what's going on with production. So it really is that volatile right now. Mm. Oh, totally. What's happening. And it's, it's not only, um, training issues, it's staffing issues, Mm -hmm. you know, and we just have to really offer and practice and hopefully receive a lot of grace through this, um, which is definitely, yeah, again, and and that's, and I think that's one thing that I'm struggling with is so for my clients that have been with me for a while, like a year or whatever, they know how I operate and know my professionalism, my project management, my solutions, all that kind of good stuff. But like when I'm getting these newer clients that are coming to me and I'm helping them through a project and we're facing all of these volatile, I'm always inside. I'm like, oh my gosh, do I look unprofessional because I'm coming with like issues? Oh, we're out of stock. Oh, there's a delay in production. Like, and, and it's reflecting, I'm like, it's reflecting poorly on me, but really I try to just educate them and say, look, right now, because of the pandemic, people, a lot of, you know, manufacturers and vendors that we use, suppliers, they had cut their staff down. They had closed closed a um, factory or whatever it is. And now that we're opening back up, they can't catch up with um, employing training and just getting the, the raw materials to, to make the goods. So I do try to educate them, but it is a frustrating feeling, especially when you are, we are... Um, you know, reliant on the suppliers kind of communicating with us, right? right. Helping us with solutions. And right now it's so chaotic that I, I feel like a lot of times I'm going to have to hunt and peck those solutions myself, which is fine. But, you know, a good supplier usually will say, Hey, I'm out of this. It's not coming into blah, 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 but we have deep inventory of this. I think this would be a good alternative, but you're not getting that right now because the industry is so chaotic. Right. 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 Yeah. right. And, and that's really, I mean, to that point, that is why it's so important to be working with a, um, a professional, yeah. like, like either, either one of us in our business yeah. is, um, are, are not a, somebody that is yeah. a, 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 a promotional products professional that really knows their business and has these established relationships. Because if you're not right now, I mean, who knows what you're, what you're getting. If if you even get it, it's just, it's Uh just crazy. Yeah. If you're going to order online and Google it, kind of like how I used to do, um, you know, we have relationships with suppliers. We have all of these things. We have a dedicated sales rep that's working for the supplier that we can really talk to and, and, and push things through and fight for our clients, basically. Okay. But like, if you're just going through for imprint or Googling something and trying to order it online, number one, you don't know if the quality is going to be there because I can advise my clients regularly on, mm, I wouldn't go with that, that item. Yep. Um, so you're, you're going to guess on that. And then second of all, you're, this is just like some machine that's going to respond to you and say, Hey, actually two days before your event, we forgot to tell you we're out of stock. Like with us, we're going to be checking all of these things on the back end for you and managing it so that we do have time to pivot if there are any issues. So I totally agree with you. I think it's a perfect time. If you don't have, if your company does regular promotional products, this is a perfect time to find someone uh, that you can trust and work with because it's not going to get any better this year. No, it's not. And really they're projecting it's, it's going to be quarter two, maybe of of next year. Well, because of Chinese new year. So a lot of people don't understand that 
is mm-hmm. so Chinese New Year's, it depends on every year it changes, but it's usually in January or February. And, you know, I say more power to you for the people celebrating it, but they take the whole six weeks off. Yep. The factories are completely closed in all of China for six weeks. That's a very long time. And so, like you said to Q2, that completely makes sense because once we get through the hump of the holidays, Q1, half the time it's going to be closed, China's going to be closed, which is one of our biggest suppliers um, for raw materials and like decorated and undecorated goods, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I could foresee that. So yeah, it is more important than ever to find someone to work with that's professional and to map out your marketing calendar. Um, if you can, I understand things come up, but if you know something's coming up, have that calendar ready, have a session with your branded, you know, promotional products partner, me, Megan, whoever you choose. Yep. And that way we can plug it into our calendars and we can be proactive for you. So you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, absolutely. Prior to us talking today, um, my meet, I had a meeting in our showroom here and, and actually we were talking about events that would be starting in December and then actually executed in February. So this is how far in advance we are planning right now. Um, No matter what industry, if you're a professional services, your attorneys, your banking, your Mm -hmm. insurance, your charitable, like whatever your your business is, your entity is like, this is how far in advance we need to be talking. Well, it was funny. I had um, a client um, that I haven't done. I haven't really worked done any work for them last year, but they do this huge conference on kind of like the hottest trends in food and whatnot. And so it's a really big (laughs) conference and they emailed me last week and I loved how proactive they were being. And they said, Oh, you know, our events, not till March, 2020, 2022, but here are some ideas we're thinking about. We're being proactive. I said, great. And then when I, I was sourcing some stuff for them and I, when I sent them kind of the information yesterday, it dawned on me. Cause I usually don't think about Chinese new year's this early in advance. And I said, PS your mm-hmm. events in March, Chinese new year's is if you want to order stuff for the event, because it's a large quantity. I said, I really suggest we get these orders in at the latest by the end of the year to, to avoid any issues. And so that's something that a lot of people don't understand about the industry as well, is that Chinese New Year's thing. Like I know when I first started in the industry, I was like, Chinese New Year's, is it that big of a deal? And then when I had to struggle through my first couple orders, uh, when it was closed or preparing to close, I was like, now I see. Now I, get now it, I get understand. It. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to segue just a tiny bit sure. talking then about, you know, things we don't know about in the industry. So Chinese new year, you know, talking about that. So we've kind of been brainstorming about some fun topics for upcoming videos as well. Do you, yeah. you want to share any of those or talk about kind of what we're thinking? Oh, like a teaser, like stay Maybe. tuned, stay yeah. tuned for next this week. Our next topic. Um, I think we're talking about brand fill. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. I'm glad you chose that one. I, that's really in the past year, super passionate about this. Um, I hate seeing businesses spend their money, spend their promo dollars on, you know, product on things and do like a big honking logo on it. And it ends up being thrown away because nobody wants that. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to talk about that. Well, and I, okay. I'm only going to say one more thing about that. Cause I'm passionate about that too. I, you know, I cloth diapered my kids. I, I had a cloth diaper yep. business actually, uh, when they were little, they're not little anymore. See, um, I, knew. I did too. Now I'm a little crunchy. I'm a little crunchy. Um, And so I am all about, you know, don't make more waste. So that's all I want to say. We will have an in-depth discussion about brand fill, which I'm actually really excited about. Um, And yeah, so I think that is what we're going to talk about. Um, So, you know, I don't know how long we've been going on, but shall we, we're having so much fun. Shall we talk about maybe... um, like, let's talk about what, you know, what you do outside of Southern branding. Like who are, who is Megan? <laughs> but like short in a short, in a short, concise statement, who is Megan? Okay. Um, so, I mean, 
I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mother. I'm a sister. Um, yeah. All of those things. Wife. So we have it. We have a 10 year old Hayden. Actually, he's going to be 11 next week, which is super crazy. Um, yeah. And I spend most of my time. He's so involved in sports and baseball, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so when I'm not at work, like that's what I'm doing. We're going back and forth from some sort of practice to some sort of game. Um, we're also like huge Razorback fans in Arkansas, um, the university of Arkansas, the Razorbacks is all we have. Like we have no professional sports. So we're Boise, Boise, we do not have either. We have Broncos. So okay. yes, I feel your pain. We're, we're university of Arkansas licensees. Like we're all about nice. the Razorbacks going this weekend to see the, get the Florida games anyway. So that's what I'm going to be doing. If I'm at home, I, I love to garden. Um, we, we've got vegetable gardens. We have, we have some chickens. We have three chickens and two dogs and that's, that's what I'm doing And fish. We've got a koi pond. Like that's my safe oh, koi pond. Love yeah. it. I, I love being outside with the flowers. Um, you know, that it was, I guess kind of silly, but like growing up, I always thought like if I had a house where I could go and I could cut flowers and make little arrangements, like that was the epitome of elegance. You've made it. Yeah. And you've so, made it. <laughs> so now I, I have hydrangeas and peonies and roses and oh, my thing. Nice. Yeah. We're going to have to like do an arrangement. One of our shows, you'll have to do like an arrangement and like show it to us. <laughs> okay. That'd be cute. All right. So tell, tell us about you. What do you, what do you okay. do outside? What do I do? Okay. I too am a mother. I have a seven-year-old daughter, a nine-year-old son. Um, we've lived in Boise, my husband and I, he owns a trailer hitch business. Um, he, and he's from Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm, I was born in Houston, Texas. So I have a lot of love for the South. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we, you know, moved to Boise seven years ago and, um, we too have, we, as well as you have three chickens, and um, me, I was so smart. I picked the chickens off of this disposition towards children and not egg laying. So I would say they're not <laughs> heavy layers. Um, they're okay, though. They're fine. Um, one's a little better than the rest. Um, and then we have two dogs. And then we also adopted two cats a year ago. So we have two cats. Um, we are animal lovers. If you can't tell, we have a lot of animals. Um, we just bought a 1960s house, um, this past winter and moved into it. So we're slowly redoing it, which is kind of fun and kind of not fun. It's kind of gross too, because it's like, That's we're not redoing it ourselves. I'm paying people because that is not my expertise. Um, but it's not fun because it displaces us a lot from whatever rooms being worked on. Yeah. Um, so what do I do for fun? I am not outdoorsy like you, Megan. I like to oh, just, okay. I saw a video. You were doing some outdoorsy things the other day. I'm not like out super outdoorsy. Like I'm not what? all about camping and that sort of thing, but I like to garden. That's different. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not outdoorsy, but I am training. So I started running, uh, running period, um, to help my son do a couch to 5k. Cause he's, he's not really into like doing anything athletic. And, um, so I had signed him up to do it at school and then COVID hit and he was, you know, they were at home and I was like, well, I can't send out an eight-year-old to do this couch to 5k with no help, yeah. you know? So I did it with him and, um, the whole family started doing it together. It was really cool. And then, so that was last March. And then I ended up really liking running. And I think part of it was, um, being outside because when COVID hit, I mean, you were with your family literally a hundred percent of the time. So I think I realized running my, was a way to get away from everyone. Perfect. Um, so I trained for my first half marathon and did it by myself virtually because it got canceled, obviously, because COVID was still happening. That was last October. And so um, this October, I signed up for my first marathon. So I've been, oh, maybe wow. you see me doing a lot of pictures and stuff outside because I train like four days a week running um, for that marathon. Um, and I really like to cook. Um, I like to eat. So do you, do you, do you like to cook? Like you cook dinner every night? I do. Of? You do. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do. Sometimes it's begrudgingly because they'll, everyone's constantly saying what's for dinner, what's for uh -huh. dinner. And then if I give yep. a certain answer, which is like, usually like salmon is the one that gets the most or stir fry gets a lot of, uh, uh. like, can we have Totino's? 
Uh, last night I made like barbecue chicken thighs, um, mashed potatoes, and uh, I threw in some ranch style beans because people said they were really hungry. And then what else did I make? Oh, and then some sauteed zucchini. And everyone was very happy with that meal. So yeah, I do usually cook most nights. Yes. So that's amazing. I, I love to cook. Um, I do not like to cook when it's expected that I cook though. Mm. So that's my challenge is like, I don't want to be the only one responsible for dinner every night. So usually, you know, I'm cooking once, twice a week and then we're winging it from there. And also like we have so many activities going on in the the evening. There's a lot of, you know, back and forth kind of things. So your whole, the begrudgingly 100% relate because that's my thing. If, if I'm not expected to cook and it's something that I want to do and it's like, Oh, I'm, I'm doing this because I love my family. Then I'm all about it. But when it's what's for dinner, mom, or what do you want to be playing Megan? And I'm like, I don't know. What'd you do? Figure it out. Well, and I have a tendency to want to try new recipes and then I'll have them planned on a certain day. And then that day will all of a sudden get really busy. But for some reason I will decide I still have to make that specific meal because I had bought everything. And so dinner won't like, I'll start cooking it at like, you know, six, six o'clock. And then it won't be on the table till seven 30. Cause it's the first time I'm making it. I'm like, Whoa, this is more laborious than I thought it was going to be. Right. Um, and then my husband always makes me laugh and he's like, do you think this was a good idea tonight? Like everyone's starving. And then I come out with something that's like, not even like substantial. And he's like, this took 90 minutes to make. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that was probably not the best idea. And I also felt stressed the whole time making it because everyone's like in the kitchen, you know, snacking. So um, that kind of segues into what I was going to talk to you about is how do you make like a work-life integration, owning, you know, being a woman-owned business? Yeah. You know, like how does that, how do you make that work? Or do you? I don't know if it, I mean, it works for us. I get, I mean, I get, I don't know, like we'll see in another, you know, 10 years and how much therapy Hayden has to have, I guess. I don't, I mean, it's all your fault to, to be determined. It will be, it will be, be all your fault. Um, I mean, I think we all carry, you know, mom guilt for sure. And my particular mom guilt is that I know I'm super aware. I'm highly privileged in that I leave. If I'm, if I'm working in the office, I leave the office every day at two o'clock and I go pick up um, Hayden or I go pick up our son and then we go home and, but I'm working at home then. And so he's at the age now where, you know, that's kind of, he's doing his own thing. He's doing homework. He's taking care of chores or doing whatever he needs to do. And it's, and it's okay. But I always feel guilty because he's still like, you know, he's still a kid. Like he's always asking, can I do this? Can I have this? Or can I, whatever. And yeah. I still have to be working. And so trying to, to balance that, even though I'm able to work from home, um, which this year, like everyone has experienced yeah. that, right? Um, and oh my God, like virtual school on top of that. And we, we didn't do virtual school. There's there. Like we, that was not good for me. No, like no. I'm not made to be a teacher. And that's, I realized that quickly. Yep. A hundred percent. So, you know, usually I'm still working till if, if there's not something going on, like I'm still working until probably six in the evening. And then, you know, my husband, so Chad will then get home. And, and then that leads to the dinner thing where it's like, what's for dinner. I'm like, well, it's not like I've been home all day and doing nothing. So Uh that's, that's our constant, like trying to figure it out. Um, but it, you know, but it, it does work. Like I grew up, um, you know, I have a brother, we are 12 years apart and we both kind of grew up as only children. Like our mom was parented each of us totally different. And I grew up, um, with my mom owning a business and I was there at the office with her a lot, a lot, a lot of evenings. And there was no TV and there was no iPad and there wasn't, you know, things Mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, I grew up watching her. So it certainly instilled a work ethic in me Mm -hmm. that I'm glad that I have. So I'm just hopeful that that will translate over to Hayden as well. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, not because of Hayden. I'm just thinking of my own children. And um, I don't want to use the word lazy, but I will. <laughs> well, we've had this screen time conversation. Um, and that that would be my my parenting tip is that's my parenting hack is, you know, kid in bed with me watching whatever he wants to watch on the iPad with headphones on. And then I'm still watching my like 
trashy, real housewives, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it, and we're good and we're still spending time together. So I I don't feel guilty about that either. You shouldn't, you shouldn't. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I had a mom that was a workaholic. Um, I, you know, I saw that and I think I just take after her. I think that's, I I have a tendency to be a workaholic. That's where I'm getting at is I start, you know, after I drop my kids off in the morning at the bus stop at seven 30, I have, uh, I start work right away and I have a tendency to literally keep working and working and working and not turning it off. And so I've been really working on that within myself is, you know, setting some boundaries, um, understanding that there can be emails in my inbox. If they're not emergencies, I can respond to them the next day and that's fine. Um, because I don't want to miss out on my kids growing up. And I, and I am when I choose to work from first thing in the morning until even after I do the dishes, I'm sometimes working. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a, it's a struggle, but it's fine. Um, one, one thing when you said you watching your trashy show. So my guilty pleasure, me and my husband just started watching it's on Hulu is called broad city. It's a 30 minute comedy about two, um, like mid 20 year old, um, Jewish women growing or kind of, you know, handling New York and navigating New York. And it is, it's extremely inappropriate. So if you like that sense of humor, great. You're going to love the show. If you are offended, then don't watch it. But that is our guilty pleasure. And we just absolutely love it. Um, And that's been our kind of go-to show because during COVID, we literally binge watched everything out there or we thought we did. Yeah. So that's my little tip on that. Um, Do you have, so I'm going to propose that we end the session, even though I'm having fun, because I don't know if people want to watch us talk all day long. Yeah. And and so we've been through, we've been through, um, parenting tips. We've, we've been through, um, buying tips, like what's happening out in the world and just like real life, you know, mom challenges. So, which is kind of everything we wanted this to be was just an authentic, Hey, this is who we are. And this is what's happening in our world. Totally. I will say a couple things. One is, and I will fix this for our next video. My webcam is struggling to focus on me. So it looks like if you're watching me, it looks like you're about a bottle deep into some wine, probably (laughs) because it keeps zooming in and out of me. And I will fix that next time. And I'm sorry. I think it's because this window behind me is so bright. It's making it struggle. But I did want to give a quick Zoom tip. I don't know if it'll make it to the final IGTV, but I will share my screen and talk you through it. So for all you Zoomers, this might be old news, but it might not be old news and I think you might like it. So let me, let me, okay. My zoom tip, I can't show it to you, but I could try doing a video on it later, but long story short, you go down to the bottom left panel of your zoom screen when you're in zoom and you'll see the little microphone, you'll see the little camera and there's a little arrow next to the camera. You click on the little arrow. The last thing on the drop down is going to be video settings. Click it and you will be in video settings and there is a button that you can click called touch up my appearance. Mm -hmm. So do you think I look this great? Well, I mean, that was pretty conceited, but um, (laughs) I have, I have touched up my appearance via zoom. So you're not seeing any of the mask me or anything going on. So that's my tip. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So that's my tip. Um, do we have any other parting words for our one or two viewers? <laughs> um, like watch my, hi, Josh. Like, gonna, I'll say hi to my fun. husband. He's probably yeah. watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm just, I'm glad we're doing this. I had fun doing this. I'm excited about our next one yeah. and you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, totally. Okay. Great. Okay. I am going to stop recording and then I'm going to keep talking to you. Okay. <laughs>